Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like this guy in the world of digital infrastructure. I'm Dean Perrine. Uh, what is what is my title now? EVP um, at, at JSA, and we are coming to you live. Sam, we are live, so we need to be. be on okay. our best behavior. Okay. <laughs> uh, we are coming to you live from PTC 2025 in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. And I'm here with my uh, my very shy friend, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sam Rabinowitz. Sam is the CEO of Lantana LED. Sam, how are you? I am great. I'm great. You How are you, great. Dean? I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. I'm, I'm sitting here in, in Honolulu with my old friend, exactly. Sam. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, where better can we have great conversations? Where better can we have fun as we, as we have these wonderful conversations? Neither one of us wearing a tie. Neither one of us wearing a tie. This is a great way to kick off the year for data centers. It is, it is absolutely perfect. I know there's, there's a lot of things we want to talk about, yeah. but let's start with every watt counts. What does yeah. that mean, Sam? Yeah, that's a great question. Yep. And for us, it means two really important things. First of all, you know, operators rarely think about the individual watts, especially when you're talking about data centers the size of megawatts. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, a, a data center designer, operator, user thinks in terms of megawatts, an individual watt itself mm -hmm. seems almost negligible. Mm -hmm. However, there's what I like to call the snowball effect, mm -hmm. which is you know, those individual watts suddenly begin to add up when you're talking about thousands or yes. 2000s or 10,000 at a time. Yeah. And when it comes to lighting, we think about these things as individual watts from the ground up mm -hmm. so that we can then push that power back to the owners themselves. Our, our fixtures, you know, what we think about in energy efficiency, we really hone in on how much power can we give back to those data center mm -hmm. owners, how to the data center users, to their clients, yeah. so that their bottom line is actually bigger because they're not wasting power on lighting, mm -hmm. and instead that's going directly to their ROI. Yeah. So for us, that's every watt counts uh, from a business perspective, from mm -hmm. a snowball effect, you know, mm -hmm. when, when we're talking about two, 3,000 fixtures at a time here mm -hmm. in a data center, mm -hmm. which is our typical customer. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're generally, you know, each of our fixtures is, is you know, about 10 watts more efficient than, say, a competitor, or one of the conglomerate fixtures. Uh -huh. uh, so now you're talking about kilowatts of power just on a straight line to line basis mm -hmm. here. And then you start talking about kilowatt hours. Yeah. And suddenly those 10 watts that each individual watt that we talk about on 3000 yep. fixtures on 2000 fixtures is translated into megawatts of savings yeah. and megawatt hours on a yearly basis. Now, most of the data center owners that we deal with also are building way more than just one at yeah, the moment. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. as you guys see, as the whole industry sees. I think I saw like $210 billion in financing in the first two weeks of 2025. Yeah. yeah. That's it's insanity. Yeah. And it's only that's a tidal wave that's only going to continue. That's <laughs> yeah, only going to continue. That's the beginning push. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. Correct. That's actually the water receding before the actual tsunami. <laughs> Although, a, yeah. be a better analogy. Yeah. yeah. Although something we probably don't want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't talk about e that. Either here. way, I get the analogy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I get the analogy. The other thing I was thinking about was like when I was a, when I was a child, I saved all my change and would put it in a, a, a big change jar yeah. and saved enough money in, in pennies yeah. uh, to buy a bicycle. Yeah. Uh, to me, and, and you guys are like that a million fold. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is, you know, it, it, it's that kind of analogy. Exactly. Now, now imagine us saving individual of those watts, and then suddenly you're able to get money back from those watts as yeah. an owner. And then you've got 10 data centers that you're deploying, or you've yeah. got 20 that you're deploying over the next five years. And each one of those data centers now has megawatt hours of savings. Yeah. Suddenly that snowball effect from each that individual, teeny, teeny little watt becomes very material for a data center operator, for a data center owner, and for the users themselves. Sam, that leads me to the very next item here, value engineering. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about value engineering. Listen, this is such an important aspect of any design project. Mm -hmm. However, uh, you know what we find is that lighting for many companies is the last thought when it comes to a data center and yeah. for many engineers too and yeah. in all the wonderful engineering firms that we've worked with and they are thoughtful wonderful dedicated engineers mm -hmm. frequently we come up well we've designed this down to a t we've planned out the ceiling we've planned out all of the cabling we've planned out all of the conduit 
wait a minute, I think we're missing something here. Yeah. Oh, shoot, it's lighting. <laughs> we can't see a thing. Correct, correct. And, and lighting is essential for yeah. fire life safety, for yeah, 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 yeah. certificates of occupancy, because there are people working in data centers yes. at any given time. And then suddenly you're talking about, you know, a, a design concept that needs to be put in last minute. Yeah. And frequently what happens is that that is then left up to, say, a general contractor or an electrical contractor to just like try and find something, something that'll fit in, yeah. that'll be the cheapest up front, because upfront costs are obviously very important. Yes. However, you know, we're we're not claiming that upfront costs aren't important, but what we're claiming and what we're what we've seen proven time and time again, twice at this show alone, we've mm -hmm. been told, mm -hmm. you know what, we had some cheap product in there, but it's too dim or it failed. Yeah. And now we we've lost customers and we need new lights. Yeah. So that part of value engineering can be effective, but also can be detrimental to the long term value of these assets yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So when you're talking about an operator who has more than just a upfront, you know, one year kind of ROI, what they're looking at when they're talking about seven years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 year fleets here mm -hmm. of data centers, it actually behooves them from a financial perspective to not pursue value engineering when it comes to lighting and instead say, what's the best value right now that we can install? It may be a little more upfront, yeah. but long term, it will deliver in energy efficiency, what we talked about yeah. in energy savings, yeah, yeah. the megawatt hours, mm -hmm. which is a direct offset mm -hmm. of the upfront cost. And then it will also deliver in quality of the lights as well in data centers. I, I can't imagine not thinking if we're if we're going to be if the next generation of these this, these critical facilities yeah. um, to accommodate AI and we're thinking about all of these these very granular ways to be more sustainable to yeah. do all of these kinds of things and we're talking about construction innovation mm -hmm. lighting is it sits right in that conversation. It does. Yeah. It does. And yet frequently it's kind of, as we talked about, yeah. it's an afterthought, not because the people aren't dedicated, not yeah. because people aren't thoughtful, but just because there are huge, huge details that yeah. need to be worked out up front. We get that. Lighting is not going to be the first thought, but our, our, our understanding and our experience in these data centers right now is that when lighting is the last thought or we're thought of not at all, it actually presents a serious problem. It's detrimental. It's yeah. exactly detrimental. Yeah. And you lose customers because yeah. of it. Yeah. I mean, when a customer walks into a data hall, the first thing that they're going to notice, they may not know the type, the type of fixture that you use, yeah. but the first thing that they're going to notice is, can I see the server racks or not? Yeah. yeah. And sometimes when you use value engineered products, you're gonna, the answer is going to be, no, I can't see the server racks. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have a bad impression of this. And yes. it, it, it's deeply rooted in human psychology in our in our in our kind of brain processing power yes. the prefrontal cortex as well <laughs> as the amygdala you know it's, I knew we were going to go here Sam yeah we were, we were going to get into it <laughs> yeah but it's deeply rooted in that and that visceral reaction should be a positive one when yeah. you're going into somebody's yeah. data cell and, and you're, you're housing this like the the future of technology yeah. why why wouldn't you be thinking make it of, look good make, make it look, it look good, good. Yeah. and make allow people to see it speaking of looking good 2025 oh. <laughs> what, what does 2025 look like for for you folks uh it's going to be a fantastic year for us uh we're really excited by the customers that we have currently mm -hmm. by the customers that we're engaging right now new customers but this is going to be one of our largest years ever if not the largest year um there is a there's a lot of work ahead of us of course. um it's it means that we're you know we're going to be able to really show our scalability of manufacturing mm -hmm. and our efficient time scales in terms of delivering products on time to sites. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm most excited about yeah. is that all of the conversations that we have, all of our customers that we've been servicing over these years, they're all scaling up. We're scaling with them. Yeah. We're showing them that this capacity is reserved for them. Yeah. We're taking a programmatic approach to this as well so that when we deal with these data center customers, they know that they have their entire fleet of data centers mm -hmm. that they're building. They have that they have reserved capacity for those data centers. Mm -hmm. But that scalability, that size, that delivery methodology is really exciting. And 2025 is going to be that really exciting year where we hit the ground running here already. We've already delivered two data centers this year already, and it's only the third Sam. week of yeah, yeah. January. 
Um, and it's, you know, we've got, we've got our work cut out for us, but it's thrilling. It's yeah. thrilling. I love it. I, 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 know, I know that you do. And if anyone can handle it, it's you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Sam, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, Dean. You yeah. bet. You bet. And thank you viewers for watching JSA. Stay connected, stay curious, and happy networking. We'll see you soon.